Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business Podcast, where each episode we'll be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. Today, we're going to talk about if you need to seek financing for your new business, or can you really do it debt free? Let's be honest, no matter which business you choose to start, there will be some type of money involved. Whether it's a hundred bucks to buy some buckets and some squeegees or thousands of dollars to build a pizzeria. During your research, you need to do a great job identifying all the money that is needed to start your business. Here are a few of the areas that you might find that you need some funds. Equipment, materials, ingredients, licensing, forming the LLC, setting up your DBA, insurance, just to name a few. You need a good idea of all the costs so that way you know which is the best route for you to go. Now, before I dive in too deep, I'm going to offer you a biased view on this. I am a fan of owning a debt-free business. I just think you make smarter decisions, your profit is healthier, and your first sales of each month are not going to be taken just to pay your debt. Are there some times when you need debt? Possibly, depending upon the business. I ran my ice cream shop debt-free, but ended up using debt on two items I was required to purchase. And if it was up to me, I never would have purchased either of those items as they were not needed at that time. Which leads to a point I want to make. There are things that are necessities and things that are nice to have. Don't confuse the two. I needed ice cream to sell. I didn't need a piece of equipment that produced less than 2% of my sales and failed to add any value or profits. But Tammy, you don't understand. I need money to grow my business. Most money can be raised by retained earnings from your profits. We call this bootstrapping, and we will discuss this concept further shortly. We discuss retained earnings in greater detail also in our business numbers episodes. Please keep in mind, I'm not saying you won't ever borrow money, but you need to have a plan and know what return you plan to have on that money and how quickly it's going to be paid off. For example, if you take out a $10,000 loan at say 5% over 10 years, your monthly payment is going to be around $1,000 a month. If your profits are say 20%, your first $5,000 in sales every single month is going to go towards this debt for the next 10 years. Is that really what you want to do is work hard for your first 5,000 only to give it all away? If that purchase will gain you an extra $20,000 in sales a month, it might be worth it. But if that purchase will be lucky to create an extra two to seven K a month, it really isn't because you're not even breaking even. Okay, let me step back for a moment and start with the first question you need to ask yourself when starting your small business. Can you start this business without borrowing money? For most of you, the answer is yes. You might be wondering which businesses can do this. Well, almost all of them can. Businesses that do not require tools or equipment to get going have the best shot. They are more time-based, meaning the customer is paying for your time. A dog walker comes to mind. Most pet owners will already have a leash, so really you don't need to do anything or have anything. You just grab their leash and get to walk in. The key to these types of businesses is to think that someone else doesn't want to do it. But what you're doing is you're providing the labor and they can provide you the tools. The next most common way to start a debt-free business is to use the tools and equipment that you already have. Many landscapers start off using their own lawnmower or other equipment out of the garage. A pool cleaning business can be done using your own brush and a cleaning net. Same thing with the cleaning service or basic handyman services. The key is to control what types of jobs you take on in those early days of the business until you can save up money to buy larger equipment to take on those more complex jobs. Now, before I go too much further, here is a great place to discuss the term I mentioned earlier bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is what you do when you don't take out loans to grow your business. Instead, you pull up your bootstraps, as they used to say, and get to work earning and growing as you go. Let's take a look at that landscaper or handyman, for example. They both can start the basic jobs until they can save up a few hundred dollars to purchase a better mower or a specialty saw. The customer can purchase their ceiling fans or toilets until the handyman can build up a reserve to do those purchases themselves prior to charging the customer. Both can get half of the money up front to purchase the materials needed for the job and then collect the labor portion at the end of the job. The key to bootstrapping is to set aside the funds to grow the business with each job you do. This usually comes out of the profits the business is making. Let's say a landscaper makes $50 a mow. He or she will have about $20 in labor costs, need about $5 for business expenses, more on this later when we talk about business numbers, and there might be about $25 in potential profits. So they would set aside about $10 out of every job to buy that better lawnmower or the other equipment that they need. We will dive into business numbers later, but keep in mind, for every job, it is this one magic formula that you need to memorize. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. The bootstrapping money comes out of the profits 
as profits will always go towards taxes, retained earnings, which is money reinvested back in the business, and owner's draw. The retained earnings are the part you use to grow your business. By the way, having a built-in savings habit from day one will continue to help you bootstrap higher and higher and will help you build great working capital and a cash flow for your business. We also discuss these items all the time over on the Badass Business Owner Podcast as they are crucial pieces to running your business. Listen, for 80%, if not more, of the small businesses that are out there, it is unnecessary for you to take out a loan. You do not need to start each month with additional debt before you even earn a dime to pay for your rent, keep your lights on, and feed your family. You do not need an additional credit card bill or a bank loan. Trust me on this. You will make way better decisions if you don't have that hanging over your head. You will end up taking jobs that your gut is telling you not to take and the customer will be horrible and the job will never go the way that it's expected and it's going to end up costing you even more money and you're going to lose. Now for the remaining 20% of you that might need to take out loans in order to get the equipment that you need to get your business going or to build out your brick and mortar, keep the amount borrowed to a bare minimum and make sure that it is a manageable amount that can be covered easily from day one. Make sure you work out those numbers. This is where the business plan is crucial for you to understand the business numbers and the potential profit each month. For example, if you were only going to bring in $5,000 a month and your expenses are already at $3,800, you do not need another $1,000 debt payment on top of this. While I might not be able to convince all of you to go debt free, at least promise to work out the numbers and make sure you are making a smart business move. Think about it. You don't want your first business decision to cost you thousands of dollars and you haven't even earned a dime yet. This is one of the reasons why it's important you know what your costs are to even open the business. Because as you recall, during our research episodes, we talked about doing your research for your new business. One of those areas had to do with the cost of doing business. Let's take a moment to look at the four main areas that you will need to set aside some funds for. First, set up costs legal fees, insurance, etc. stuff like that. You will want to keep a log of what money is needed to get the business up and going legally. For example, how much is your business license going to cost you? Will you need money to set up your LLC or to lock up a trade name? How about your insurance? Make sure you look at all of these things and if you need $100, $300, or $1,000 to be able to get your business going. While I don't encourage anyone to start a business before doing any of this, you might do a few side hustle type jobs to make the money you need. For example, our landscaper might not mow lawns as a business, but rather as a side hustle, save up the money and then form the company and do it officially. Second area you were doing your homework on, tools and equipment. Earlier, we discussed the tools and equipment that you will need. The main point I want to make is to put your tools and equipment into three buckets. The ones you must have to get going. The nice to have bucket are those that will make the job a little bit easier and allow you to take on different types of jobs. And finally, when I make it big bucket, those are the items that you really, really want, but you don't necessarily need. Yes, it would be awesome to have them, but it's just not the time yet. By the way, these suckers probably should stay in your dream bucket. You don't really need them. So just dream about them, okay? (laughs) All right, materials and ingredients. For some of you, you will need products or materials to either sell or use as part of your service. For example, a cleaner will need cleaning supplies. A brick and mortar will need items for the shelves. When I had my ice cream store, I needed, yep, you got it, ice cream. So don't forget to figure out what your budget needs to be early on for the products you need to get the business up and running. Do you need $500 worth? Or in my case, I needed about $2,500 worth of ice cream alone, not to mention the cost of cones, cups, bowls, lids, etc. Also, look into what can be on consignment, which is you pay for it as you sell it, and what needs to be purchased before you can even sell it. One quick thing that I forgot to mention up in tools and supply, don't forget you don't necessarily have to buy it when you can rent it. There's a lot of businesses like Home Depots and Lowe's that can rent you equipment for the day. Make sure you look into that as well. Now, our fourth bucket is marketing. You will need to know how much money you need for your marketing plan. This can cover a huge range of stuff. There's going to be a lot of stuff in there that is for free, like Facebook groups, a basic website, and some costs like shirts and postcards. But once again, you'll need to prioritize them and have a budget for what you need to save up for. Let's say you want to have shirts off the bat. Great. You need to know that it's going to be about $50 or so for them. Even though they're not mandatory, sometimes it's good to start off with at least one or two of them. But once again, you can bootstrap them after you do your first couple of jobs. 
don't ever be suckered into thinking that you must have something when the reality is you don't necessarily have to have it at the moment. And while these four areas will not cover every cost, they will hit about 95% of what does matter. As part of your research and your success blueprint, you will want to go into this area with your eyes wide open and what your costs are going to be. Now, before we go on, there is another obvious way you can finance your business. Maybe you already have a small nest egg set aside to get going. Maybe you have built up a thousand dollars in savings that you plan to use. Awesome. The best thing you can do is have money set aside before you even get going. And even better is if you have several months of reserves to fall back on, which is what we talked about early on in the series. Can you start the business without any of this? Yes, but having money does make it a little bit easier. But sometimes you have to do what you have to do to survive, and I get it. But if you aren't in that desperate time of your life, then I recommend you save up and have a plan. If you don't need to make that leap as soon as possible, yet you still don't have a savings, I recommend doing a side job for a few months just to get that money. And if you're thinking about making the leap into a whole different industry for your future business, maybe you can be someone's employee during the very beginning. This way it's a win-win. You learn how to do the business on somebody else's dime and they can end up helping you finance your new business while you save up money while you work for them. It's a win-win for you because guess what? They don't even realize that you soon are gonna be a competitor. At the end of the day, your goal is how can I be as debt free as possible? I promise you, it is way harder to get out of a hole. And I've met so many business owners that have got themselves in a serious mess due to all the debt that they've accrued in their business. And it's not always the big one-time shots. It's little stuff that adds up over time. So do your best to bootstrap your business. Use the tools you have and then save up from your profits to buy more tools or anything else that you need to grow the business. Now you probably noticed I did not bring up business loans. I don't believe in debt. I'm not that person to teach you how to use business loans to grow your business. And I'm not gonna be mad at you if you take out debt and go open up a business loan. But since I'm dedicated to small business owners not going into debt, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about getting business loans. There are plenty of specialists out there that can help you with this piece. But keep in mind, this is a profit game, not a sales game. Debt takes away from your profit. Yes, you're going to need a new truck at some point, but it doesn't need to be a $50,000 pickup when an $8,000 pickup will do. Some of the most successful small business owners never took out a dime of loans. And I want you to be in this club. And as you can see, we're starting to talk about money. So over the next few episodes, we're going to continue this trend about talking about how you can keep as much of your money as possible. And one of the very first things you're going to need to do is have a bookkeeping system. And we're going to talk about that in the next episode. And before you go, don't forget to get that startup guide. Subscribe to the Badass Business Owner YouTube channel and podcast so you can continue to grow your business. And I will talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.